This lonely, miserable, useless loser gets overnight plastic surgery, transforming him from ugly man to the ladies man. Literally. So, Yuya Tenju has been treated unfairly since his childhood, recalling that the world didn't give an F about him. Despite that, he knows that the fact he was born means he had a purpose to fulfill, and that purpose is to help people in need. But while one shouldn't weigh above their problems, the scene of a girl being harassed by some filthy thugs triggers his instincts. Unlike others who are just minding their own business, he immediately intervenes. The thugs end up beating him though, since, you know, he is fat, and so he should just bounce away. Luckily, he was able to keep them occupied long enough for the cops to arrive. He excuses himself before the girl could even thank him and goes home. That evening, when Yuya arrives home, he reminisces about when it all began, dating it back to how he was born a repulsive appearance. Secluded as an object of social rejection, he's not just mocked at school by his peers, but also treated poorly at home by his parents and two younger siblings. Moments like these had him wondering if he was human and deserved such a gruesome fate. Luckily, there was at least one person who treated him like a decent person, which is his grandfather. But it is quite unfortunate that he died some months back. The old man groomed Yuya in such that despite how he was treated, to always offer help to those in need and to live his life chasing happiness. So much so, that the old man gave his house and all his possessions to Yuya, and when his parents couldn't get a share, they cut ties with him for good. Hence, he had to live alone in his grandfather's house while sustaining himself with part-time jobs to make ends meet. Till it's finally the day he graduates from middle school, and as if getting derogatory comments on his yearbook wasn't as a result of this, he ends up losing his job and is sort of back to square one. Well, at least he has a house. You didn't have one in middle school. Yet, Yuya is frustrated by this sad lifestyle and apparently his appearance that he spashes the mirror, and while he does it, a secret pathway opens to a dark room. So the room is filled with crazy stuff, actually souvenirs that the old man picked from his travels around the world. Yet what sparks Yuya's interest the most is a carved door on the other side. Yuya opens the door and is hit on the head. Bam! Anime characters and curiosity. Turns out the door leads to some kind of pathway in another world. Although physically it looks like a small cottage, yet it remains unknown whether the door appeared there of all places. Which makes it easy and interesting that crossing back into reality was merely passing a door. The floating player status thingy also informs Yuya about his new titles, Master of the House, and also gives him special functions like asset conversion. He also sees a peculiar function that would enable him to check his stats, and boy, it is a dreadful sight to behold when all his stats display to level 1. That's basically equal to 0 in binary. Soon. Yuya sees a scribble note, and thanks to language transition, he reads the note from the former owner of the cottage, known as the Sage. Seems his life was coming to an end, so he had to give its ownership to the next person that would walk into it. So basically, Yuya is now a proud owner of two houses, including the weapons that were left behind by the Sage, which he tests out in grand style. Despite not having enough skill to properly wield any, and yes, after a moment of trying out his new babies, Yuya is disappointed that his stats remain at level 1. He gets no time to think about what could be wrong because the next thing that appeared in his yard is a level 300 ogre. That's like 299 levels difference. But luckily for Yuya, there's a magic barrier circling the cottage that prevents every intruder except the master of the cottage. Suddenly, an impulse kicks in, and Yuya drives his spear through the monster, killing it instantly. This accomplishment of his awards him enormously boosting his level to a stunning 100, all his stats reflecting at a peak of 1,000 points, and his loot from the ogre awarding him with 1,500,000 yen in real money. My mind is blown, guys. Not just that, Yuya gets overnight plastic surgery through his advancement in levels, waking up to be some insanely ripped monster who can't even fit into his clothes. Of course, he felt there was something different about him, but couldn't visually see it. Yeah, he smashed the mirror the other night. So for the rest of the break, Yuya's routine pretty much changes from being the hated newspaper delivery person. His activities included research on herbs in the other world that serve medicinal purposes and food purposes, fighting monsters for loot which were later converted to money, shopping for a new school uniform, a total upgrade, and basically his fear of school that the end of all that activity, his level not only increased to a stunning 150, there was also a visible difference in his fighting skills, although he still harbored some doubt in him. 
I mean, that's what a person who had been bullied all his life would expect. But instead, when he pulls up at school, he gets stares from both the guys or girls, who end up stunned when he tells them his name. After the expressions, only then does Yuya take a look at the mirror, also stunned by his new looks. At the end of the episode, Yuya has to deal with a spoiled mob including his abusive little siblings, who command to know the secret about his transformation, when a stunning girl pulls up in a limo. She introduces herself as Kaiori Hojo, the girl he saved back then from the goons, and also mentions that she had him investigated so she personally thanks him. However, she is shocked by his new appearance. As part of her gratitude, she informs him that she secured a spot for him as an officer of the student council at Usei Academy, which was also a courtesy from her father, Tsukasa Hojo, the chairman of the board who is also thankful he saved his father. Yuya is stunned to be invited to a super elite school, but also doubts his abilities while the abusive little things jump on the offer like when rats see cheese. Yes, I took that personal. In the end, Kaori blatantly ignores them, claiming to also have investigated their wicked acts towards their older brother, Yuya. Later, Tsukasa gives a brief introduction to Yuya and why he would fit into Usei Academy. Yet, he doubts he could fit into a school designed for geniuses. In the end, Tsukasa offers him a trial admission, also placing him in Misawara's class. On his entrance into class, every boy and girl drop dead at how gorgeous he looks. Meanwhile, his insecure self has him wishing to dive into a hole. It's crazy how the kids at an elite school are even more accommodating compared to those in whatever mediocre college he attended previously. He quickly makes acquaintances with Kyoto, Ryo, and Shingo, but is most grateful that they treated him like a normal human being. After class that day, he gets to hang out with Kaiori, who reveals to him that she figured out he was Yuya despite his physical change because his eyes still had their honest glow, like the day they met, and then pulls up to the other world where he had attained level 235. This time around, when Yuya crosses the barrier of the house, he makes a shocking discovery of another human girl in the other world. Now a high school millionaire, Yuya figures it's about time he went on a shopping spree. And while there, not only does he get glances from every angle, he is also approached by Hikaru, who pleads with him to take the place of their missing model in a photo shoot with Miu. Well, while it goes on, Yuya is privileged to have a nice view of her bosoms, being significantly taller than Miu. Yet what's more hilarious is how nervous he gets when Miu butters his hands and body next to her. Softness. After shooting, he engages in a friendly conversation with Miu, which is a huge win, and is grateful for the opportunity to work with her and even wear such clothing which was something he never imagined would happen. While they talk, Sho, the supposed model, arrives at the scene interrupting their conversation, and also makes weird flirty gestures at Miu. He stands up to Sho after sensing Miu's jumps at him, ready for physical contact. Little did he know that his opponent is the master of the door. Yuya basically uses Ultra Instinct and gives his whole body a flip, which is well deserved. And while Yuya freaks out about turning Sho into a foot mat, the crowd in the mall goes wild as they cheer him on. As if that's not enough humiliation, Hikaru seems to have caught the scene on camera and threatens to publish it if Sho didn't get his ratchet behavior out of the mall. Also well deserved. In the end, Miu and Hikaru thank Yuya for standing up the show. They also give them luxury bags of clothing as compensation for his work with them. Meanwhile, in the other world, Princess Lexia fantasizes about the daring guy who saved her in the dark region and just dives out of bed, announcing she was going to look for him and thank him. Yeah right, Sis thinks she can fool us. Due to a girl's pursuit for, I don't know love, the guards end up injured while fighting high-level monsters when Yuya arrives, destroying them with a single slash. Just then, Lexia makes a shocking revelation. Well, a proposal to be his wife. As preposterous as it sounds, she has the captain of the knights, Owen, to scold her about her delusional actions despite being in an exalted position in the royal family. Soon, they arrive in Yuya's cottage which was located in a place they refer to as the Dark Region. After a brief introduction between them, it seems Yuya might have caught the affection of the second in line to the throne of the other world known as Arcelia Kingdom. Despite being unsure of what world he came from, she offers to be friends with him when Owen also informs him that the king would love to offer his gratitude personally. Also, it is revealed that a member of the royal family holds a grudge against the sweet Lexia, and the man is also responsible for sending assassins to hunt her down, 
but unfortunately, they got killed by the monsters in the dark region when Yuya found her. Meanwhile, in the real world, Yuya remains the heartthrob of the ladies, and yes, he finally gets enrolled into Usei Academy, where he also makes another friend, Kita. At this point, Yuya is surrounded with so many waifus, more girls than you could ever pull. Among Yuya's feats, that day is simultaneously saving Kite from one of Akira's shots, while scoring the goal at the same time. Believe me, the tea is always in the ladies' changing room as Keet and the other girls spread the world about Yuya's save and score after PE. Later, classes are in full swing when suddenly motorbikes ram down the school gate down. The riders are revealed to be thugs led by none other than the despicable twins, who have come to seek revenge on Kaori for letting Yuya into the school. Just when they are about to abduct her, Yuya's body acts on impulse once again. He jumps from the fourth floor to the bottom and literally deals a great deal of damage to the thugs and bikers. In the end, Yuya still ends up saving Yoda from the choking grip of one of the thugs, stating he might have not forgiven them, yet will choose his family overall. If that was me, I'll put that bike's handle in his <laughs> Well that's all for today. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next time.